I hope you're all doing well. Go ahead and share my screen. Share it clean. See what sense we can't make out of these markets here this morning. All right. First off, let me get into uh, our trade here for this morning. I uh, have an open position on. I'm going to pull. I'll go ahead and pull it up for you. Let's see here. I'll pull up my trade manager. There we go. Just place this right before class started. Only now it's certainly gone a bit negative on us. Um, not by much, but here on the dollar Swiss, this is one I've been kind of looking at um, since yesterday, actually. I was looking at this longer term Gartley pattern here on the dollar Swiss. We had a nice little flow of a, a, a little A followed by a nice little B and followed by a, a nice gradual little C coming down here on the dollar Swiss to this 78.6 percent retracement level. Also as it was making lower lows right in through here you can see that the LP trend line was making higher highs. Right before I got into this, this was actually right before the hour passed, it was actually signaling a plus five and then just kind of plummeted a little bit. Um, so I went ahead and placed the trade uh, right in through here. Um, you know, I do like these Gartley patterns when they form. I like the fact that there's a little divergence right in through here. Um, when you look at the LP trend line as it was coming down, it actually reached a slight high right up in here of a plus five right before it closed, uh, before kind of sinking down into negative territory. So this is a, you know, when buying into a retracement, there's always a little bit of risk involved because you're essentially buying into a downtrend. So on this one, uh, on the on this dollar Swiss, what I'm going to do here is I already have my entry in. I bought it at the market. It did give us a signal, even though it's showing negative now. It did give us a signal. <clears throat> so my buy entry here, this would be considered a risk on trade, by the way. Futures are indicating slightly up um, this morning, even though a lot of the the global markets have been down. <clears throat> What we're going to do today is we're going to, you know, we're going to treat this as more of a risk on trade, looking for markets to to increase in value a bit this uh, morning. And then um, what we're going to look for uh, on the opposite end is uh, is going into more of a risk off trade because that's actually worked out very well for us. So my buy entry was at the market here. My stop, I'm actually going to place a little bit, my stop a little bit further away on this one. I'm going to put it right below this swing low. Let me kind of bring things up here a little bit. If you wanted to wait, you know, if you wanted to wait a bit on this, you know, it did make a nice little support here at the 78.6. Um, you know, I know I'm, you know, it's never easy to, you're, you're never, instantly up on a trade right when you get in but if you wanted to wait for this to go plus five once again before getting in that could be some added confirmation um, but just like everything in the market things don't always flow directly in your favor my stop I'm going to put right below this hundred percent retracement level right down in here so my stop I'm going to put in stop 1.01 and that would be 0 08. I'll put it at 0 084 to make it an even 40 pips. So I'm going to stop right in through here. 1.01084. And I'll put my take profit at a one to one risk reward, which will be 1.01084. Zero one eight eight four. Just looking for a one to one risk reward. So limit one to one. Just looking for a one to one risk reward on this one because I want to look to trade the other side of the market here today also. 
So let me go ahead and bring this down. And we'll look for this one to be what we call risk on. We'll, we'll start kind of looking at these as kind of more risk on, risk off scenarios. Uh, markets indicating slightly positive open here in the U.S. Even though the global markets, global markets negative. Oil has made a, 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 a small bounce here this morning. It's up 1%. We actually had very good luck yesterday. Uh, I'll talk about this here in just a second. Uh, the ADP, uh, the ADP non-farm report, as as I call it, came out above expectations. Looking at the news here this morning, go over here to Forex Factory. The non-farm employment change. This is the private payroll number. I wouldn't get too excited about it. Some people call it a, um, a leading indicator to the non-farm payroll, which is on Friday morning. Uh, the indication was a positive 193, came out of positive 205. Uh, believe it or not, the dollar actually got weaker after this because the, the futures were up a little bit more here this morning, and then it seemed like they, they came down a bit. I wonder if we're in a stage to where any type of positive news as far as payrolls or anything like that comes out. I wonder if we're in a, we're in a state right now to where the markets, because they don't want the Fed to raise interest rates in March. Uh, anytime a We've seen this before where anytime a positive news report comes out that's kind of good for the U.S. economy, um, that the markets sometimes will sell off a bit, and the reason for that is because uh, while well, the the markets and all the big money surrounding it uh, don't like the idea of the Fed raising rates. So again, um, just to kind of come back to this dollar Swiss, somebody just asked a question here. You can if it's come, it's been coming down against me. So you know the luck of you know I get into a trade and then it goes negative. Um, you know the what you can do here is you can wait for it to go more to a positive five once again if you wanted to look for a little added confirmation um, since it's kind of making a double dip towards the 78.6 level. Surely was not expecting it to, to take a little bit further drop right when class started. I thought it would stay there. So you get the benefit of uh, you get a little bit of a benefit of seeing what it's doing now right now. So if you did want to wait for a positive five on here, you could. But like I said, I'm in the trade, and I never fully expect a trade to instantly go in my favor. <clears throat> More times than not in the markets, you, you always have to sustain you know, the market going against you a little bit before it goes in your favor, and vice versa sometimes. Um, let's see here. So this is a, would be considered a bullish Gartley pattern. I forgot to put this one on here. We're going to start calling this what it is, and this is this is a risk on trade, and the, the you can call it dollar strength. Things like shorting the the euro dollar, um, long on dollar Swiss, long on dollar yen would be considered yeah, risk on trades, which essentially means that. When the markets go up, it tends to pull things like the dollar Swiss up. It tends to pull the euro dollar down. It tends to pull the dollar yen up. Um, we all know what happened yesterday. Sometimes it's good to be a bear. And we will be bears today also. Don't worry. Worked out in our favor yesterday for 75 pips. In fact, any of the trades that you took that were short on dollar yen or CAD yen from Monday's class or from yesterday's class, uh, where you could have, uh, we had some significant profits on those. So uh, as far as trading the, the, the downside to the market. <clears throat> there we go. All right. So switching gears here, I'll kind of keep this off in the left-hand side, and I just want to take a look at what's been happening here. Monday and yesterday, we essentially were looking at some of these yen pairs right in through here, like you see dollar yen, 
our thing was on the dollar yen when it made this big move up on um, you know uh, on last week after the the Bank of Japan announced negative interest rates everybody and their twin brother was saying okay let's buy dollar yen the the yen's gonna get weaker <clears throat> kind of the thought process we had was well you know what the yen would uh, obviously got weaker right from the get-go and markets did go up but does that mean the the yen is 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 not going to trade risk off anymore meaning if the markets go down uh, is it going to keep the yen from getting stronger and obviously it has not um, as the markets tumbled they were a little mixed on Monday, but as the markets tumbled yesterday, we were actually short on CAD yen uh, throughout this. This was actually one of our trades from, from Monday also on dollar yen. You can see that the yen is still firmly planted in trading risk off, meaning global markets have been down overnight. Um, you know, a lot of this support that's been found here on the dollar yen is caused by the fact that the futures did come up and indicate a more a slightly positive open. So, you know, the yen is still trading risk off. So, I mean, we can still look to be shorting these yen pairs um, throughout this um, throughout this downturn in the market that we're seeing as of right now. The one I'm going to look at here with uh, with y'all, if you will, is we'll look at we're going to switch gears here over to CAD yen. Because oil's making a slight rebound here, it's up one percent, which is causing some strength on the Canadian pair. We were actually short on this CAD yen yesterday. We got short right in here, and it it, it really was starting to make some lower lows right in through here. Um, we got into it just off a break, and we put our stop 50 pips away. We put our take profit level 75 pips away, and ended up hitting on our 75 pip profit. It's been kind of just sideways right in through here uh, on the LP trend line. So not a lot of oomph, if you will, into this uh, uptrend that we're seeing right now. Plus oil is only up like 1%. The oil uh, oil is not only driving up the Canadian, it, it not only drives the Canadian stronger, but if you're looking for reasons why the pound got stronger overnight, I think that was also based on the, the recovery in oil prices. Seems like pound has been another one that's been um, slowly but surely it's been uh, making um, headway or getting stronger when oil prices go up. And it's also been one of the ones that's been getting beaten down when oil prices go down. So there is a retracement occurring here on CAD yen, which we can kind of put this in our back pocket. Uh, you know, I'm long dollar Swiss. If the markets go up, I would fully expect that to go up, and I would fully expect it to, to hit a take profit. However, if we get another sell-off here after the market opens here at 9:30, then we could have some good entry levels here on this CAD yen. It's already coming up to a 78.6% retracement, so we're 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 already we're already right at that 78.6 level. This is one where I would I would really look here at the you know it, everything kind of is showing up right in through here so you know whenever we're selling into a retracement or buying into a retracement you know you are selling into an immediate uptrend so it's not surprising that this is going up um, you look at it overall though and it's been kind of making lower you know it's it's breaking into a slight lower high right in through here you see lower high lower high slight higher high. But if this thing were to go negative, if it starts to show any type of selling pressure, if it goes negative five, I think you'll see this break down again into lower lows. But that's why we have to wait for some confirmation on this. So I, I would say wholeheartedly on this, our sell entry, since it's already hit the 78.6, would be a negative five on the one hour totals. The stop, I don't think it would be necessary really to put it above this swing high over here, uh, over the 100% retracement, because if it does come down, we'll probably be catching it into a downtrend, if, especially if the markets do sell off. Um, the stop, I would put you know one pip above wherever the swing high ends up. Obviously, we'd be catching this as momentum goes down.
put in a maximum of 50 pips for your stop or above the swing high, which one ever, whichever one is lower. I would suggest that if this does start selling off, you're going to see this start to come down before it goes before the before the one hour totals go negative. You'll see this start to come down. So this is so volatile that um, you don't want to be you don't want to be too uh, don't want to put your risk too far away on this. So the limit on here, I do still think that on these yen pairs, we can look for for higher amounts of risk reward. So on the limit, look for one to one and a half risk reward. So an example on that would be if we if we do end up putting our stop at a max of 50 pips, you would risk 50 to make 75. We're a four for six on risking 50 to make 75s in the last couple of weeks. So we actually have had pretty good probability on shorting some of these yen pairs. So when we hit, we're making a bigger amount of risk rewards because we're playing the volatility on these pairs. You know, these candles, they look like small candles sometimes on here, but they're really, you know, a lot of these candles represent huge amounts of pip movement. And this would be considered risk off. So we'll keep the risk off on there. We'll say sell CAD yen. We'll call it a bounce from the 78.6% retracement. Put that up there. There we go. So keep an eye on that one. Obviously it looks strong, but we want to make sure we confirm that it's getting weak. That's why we're going to look for a shift on the one hour totals. Obviously still indicating a more positive, <clears throat> positive momentum on, on CAD yen. There we go. You see a lot of these yen pairs down in here are retracing a bit. You see New Zealand coming up and retracing. You see Aussie coming up and retracing. Even though the yen is still down, <clears throat> yen's down. You know, it went up almost 300 pips, and now it's down. It came down about 200 and what 260 something pips, 270 pips. So it's almost fully retraced to the downside. So. The yen is still trading risk off, so any type of sell-off in the markets, we can certainly expect all these yen pairs are probably going to make more downward movement, so we can we can kind of catch that, if you will. There we go. Uh, one of them that's interesting, I'm not going to put this one on the trading sheet for today, but one of them that's interesting to me anyway is right here on on the euro dollar the euro dollar I've been kind of <clears throat> you know euro dollar and dollar Swiss I'm already in the dollar Swiss that's why I'm not putting euro dollar on the trading sheet but you know it, it's hard for anybody to imagine the euro dollar you know making any type of sustained break above here there's there's that 110 level that's right up there so that's 110 right up in there, and you can see it's kind of slowly approaching that 110 level. Um, you know, it's it's hard for me to imagine. It's hard for a lot of traders to imagine that the you know the euro dollar with all the with all the hoopla surrounding its, um, you know the the extended QE programs. This is a daily chart showing you what the euro dollar has been doing for the last month or so. It's been just going sideways, and you know, coming up above this 110 level right in here, I mean, I think that you're asking the euro dollar to be going up as they're kind of in the midst of um, major QE announcements or more printing of money coming up here in probably March. I think that's the reason why the euro dollar has been so consolidated for the last month or so. 
it's a level to watch because if you do get a bounce off that 110, um, you know, being long on dollar Swiss is essentially the same trade as being short the euro dollar. So that's why I'm not too, you know, aggressively trading into shorts on euro dollar. But it is a very interesting level that it's at right now. You'd almost want to say, you know, if it does, you know, any indications of reversals from here, like a negative five, as long as it's below the 110 level to look for opportunities to short. Of course, you have to wait until after the market opens, after 9.30, wait for the stock markets to kind of get out of your way a little bit. Markets go up, this probably will bounce. Markets go down, this will probably continue up. So that that uncertainty is, is kind of why I'm staying away from the euro dollar here this morning. Another one that we always like being bearish on, if you will, is right here on the pound. <clears throat> Pounds made some significant headway along with the CAD. Like I said, I think a lot of this has to do with their, uh, with the oil prices. We're making a bit of a recovery here today. I will put this one on the trading sheet because uh, right here on the pound, this 4,500 level is a key level. It's making a breakdown uh, above it, of course, right now. And I can go ahead and zoom in all the way on this one. You can kind of see there's a little bit of divergence forming on this on this trend, though. You can see it was coming up and up and up. Uh, you know, it was coming up on the LP trend line, and there's just been a, a little bit of a divergence right in through here as it hit the 4,500 level uh, to where it's starting to make some some slight lower highs right in through, through here on the uh, – on the LP trend line. Another one that I'd be looking at today, and again, this is something that you'd have to be patient on and just wait for the trade to come to you, is a break below the 4,500 level, along with a negative five on the one hour totals. Obviously going up right now, but we do get a break below 4,500, I think that would give us a nice little bounce to the downside. You know, at, at the very least, it could come down here and, and, and retest the 4,400 level. The stop, since it's trading at like 4,560, as far as the stop, I would put the stop at a 50 max, 50 maximum for the stop order. And because the pound has actually been showing a little bit more volatility as of late, uh, you know, volatility has been pretty high on the pound, I think this is another one that you could look for a one to one and a half risk reward ratio on if that does come down. So I think if it comes down and makes a break and, and clears that 4,500 level, 4,400 is just a hop, skip, and a jump away. So, you know, if it comes down and clears 4,500, as long as your take profit is above the 4,400 level, I think you could look for a higher amounts of risk reward if this were to if this were to break down today. <clears throat> obviously, if even if we with global markets being down overnight, obviously I'm not too uh, I'm kind of favoring even though I'm long on dollar Swiss. If markets do make a a little bounce here in the first half hour of trading. That that could probably be a profitable order, but I'm not too bought into um, what I call the dead cat bounces. Whenever uh, whenever market was down almost 300 points on the Dow yesterday, so these dead cat bounces when the market comes back up, I, I'm not too I'm not too bought into some type of overall recovery in stocks right now. I think uh, I think they're still they're still just making lower highs in the midst of a downtrend since the beginning of the year. So I think it's very comfortable to say, you know, until we see any type of, you know, we, most of our trades have, have favored the short side of the market, being short on, on higher yielding assets such as stocks and oil and commodities. Until we see any type of, 
real big sign of economic recovery. You know, I don't think there's anything wrong with being bears. Sure, we can do things like trading this dollar Swiss and, you know, in case we do get a dead cat bounce to the upside. But this pound would also be a risk off trade. There we go. Alrighty then. So CAD yen, pound dollar, that's no longer viable right there. So So this means this is our this is our bullish this is our this is our bullish play And then we got this in our back pocket that if we do get another sell off, be ready to <clears throat> what's going to happen here, folks, is if you are long dollar Swiss, if you get stopped out on this dollar Swiss, and I've said it before and I'll say it again, you can't lick your wounds too long and say, oh, crap, I got stopped out and, you know, and, and kind of curse the market and dwell on it. Because if you get stopped out on dollar Swiss, you got to kind of turn around and then go into risk off mode. And, and look for those opportunities on those yen pairs and on the pound for that matter. So you got to you gotta be quick to be able to reverse position or else you'll miss out on, you know, you'll just end up with one loss for the day instead of, um, for example, yesterday uh, we had the same scenario. I was actually long dollar Swiss from one of our trades from Monday and I got into it on Monday afternoon. Um, I don't know if you recall this or not, but we had a play in here that at the dollar Swiss, when it was already retracing a bit. And if it were to go back above the 102 level, we were looking to buy it on a plus five. And we did. And I actually was in profitable on here. So yesterday, uh, because the markets did, it was a little shaky on Monday, but the markets did end up going up slightly. And then uh, as we started class on, on Tuesday in, the, in my Nuri FX classes, I told people straight up, I said, okay, I'm long dollar Swiss. I had tightened my stop. My stop was way down here, but I tightened my stop right below a swing low here. And I said the same thing. I said, you know, hey, we're going to, you know, we're, we're going to look to be long dollar Swiss right now. I'm, I'm, you know, if I, if the markets do come down, this is probably going to be stopped out. Um, but we are also quick to go in and short the CAD yen at the same time. And so I limited my risk on dollar Swiss to only 20 to 20. I was initially risking 40 pips, but I limited my risk to only 20. I think it was 25 pips that I lost on that dollar Swiss trade. But since I was so, uh, but since I was able to adjust and go in and go short on CAD yen and look for that higher risk reward and, and not dwell on the loss, instead of losing 25 pips for the day, I also turned around on the other side of the equation and made 75 on the CAD yen. So net, I was up 50 pips for the day yesterday, which is not a bad day of trading um, when you can pull 50 pips out of the market. It's, it's, it's a hell of a lot better than placing 20 to 25 scalping trades looking for 10 pips at a time and winning 60% of them and coming out of your day with like a 20, 25 pip gain. So well, it's not a bad way to go. So that's what I mean about, you know, not, you know, right now we're in a risk on trade looking for market to go up. <clears throat> But if it does tank, then we'll look for it to tank and, and go the other direction. You can see CAD Yen's already starting to come down a bit. Markets have just now opened. Um, NASDAQ's up like 26 points here, right here at the open. Dow's up about 90 points. 
I'm not sure if Yahoo. I would, I've been pulling up this Yahoo Finance. Yeah, you can see Dow's up like 92 points. S&P, Nasdaq's up like 20 right now. Looks like it's refreshing here. So yeah, we got nice little upswing right now. You can see with that up, that positive market open, our dollar, that dollar Swiss is now is now going almost to break even. You can see oil is up two percent. That's already kind of built into this CAD yen being up right in through here. Yen hasn't recovered though. Yen's still getting beat up right down there at the bottom. So as far as further trades go, and listen carefully on this one, like uh, we have the pound dollar sitting there as the one that we'd have to wait on. CAD yen is one that we'd have to wait on. Dollar Swiss, hopefully we get a dead cat bounce um, that can lead us into a little bit of profitability here today. But going from here, like overnight, as you look at the markets, you know, it's all really going to depend on the overall broader market movement. Um, people always hate the, uh, the corporate buzzwords, but the synergy the synergy that exists between all these markets is really going to tell us which direction to go. But let's say that on the flip side of the equation that the market does make that dead cat bounce, it does go up. And let's say dollar Swiss does get go to full profitability. Probably wondering, well, where do we go from there? <clears throat> I would still favor the bearish side of the market. I would still favor looking at any type of upward momentum or upward swings in the market today being, um, being more of a dead cat bounce. So you can see we started off, uh, here's our most recent significant swing high here on CAD yen. What I would do if it's, if the market did start to go up today and it stood, uh, started to make some significant highs and it breaks through the 100% retracement here, I would go ahead and, and, and put your, uh, move your, move the swing high up to here and still look for the same retracement mode. So we'll still look for it to come up here to the 78.6 level. Still look for it to make a, uh, you know, a bounce from like this 78.6. So still continue looking for trades into retracements on CAD yen. If we don't get an execution on it this morning, if the markets just go up. <clears throat> so if markets go up, that'll probably clear those highs. And then just move your the start for, of your FIB levels over to here. Um, good question. Somebody had asked about on the FIB levels how to the 78.6. I know is not the the 78.6 level actually. If you right click, if you if you um, go to your Fibonacci properties, like if I double click on the on this red line here, the FIB, and then go to FIB properties. If you don't have the 78.6 level, all you have to do is click on add, go to 0.786, put 0.786 under levels. Under the description, put in 78.6. And if you ever want to see the levels, which these level, uh, the FIB levels, uh, like you see here how it says 78.6 and it shows you what the actual 78.6 level is. Go at and then percentage dollar sign will tell you the actual level on MetaTrader. So that's that's how you add the 78.6 level. I'll cancel that out because I don't want to add it because I already have it on there. <clears throat> Take a look at CAD yen. Let's see what this is doing. You can see it's starting to turn. It's negative 1.56 right now. So we're getting closer and closer on this if we start selling off at all. It's funny, seven minutes into the market open here, and you know, you're watching like CNBC like I do, and it's like uh Dow is up for the first day in three days. I guess on Monday it was slightly negative, so we had one of those up, down, up, down days on, on Monday. I forgot about that. 
but they make that the big headline. Dow up for first day in three days. It's like, what? <laughs> really? All right. Because the Dow hasn't closed yet, so I don't consider something being up until it closes up. <laughs> Otherwise, I still look to sell it. So this is... um. Obviously, we're already long dollar Swiss, but this is this one's getting pretty close here. So this is one that you'll want to uh, watch here uh, on this CAD yen, and also keep of course keep an eye on that pound dollar. Also, I think if the markets come down, I think the pound will will sell off. Also, it's got plenty of room to retrace. It's made a huge move of 200 pips here to the upside, and has yet to make a higher low. So that's another one to keep an eye out on. It's both pound dollar and CAD yen. Especially if, um, no matter what happens with dollar Swiss, both pound dollar and CAD yen are both ones to keep an eye out on for the next uh, uh, for the next day or so, or, or or near term, if you will. So that leaves you that leaves you. Uh, excuse me. I've, uh, if you hear my voice kind of go in and out, I threw out my back last night really bad. And so I'm, I'm kind of sit. I'm doing the class from a recliner because you know how when you throw your back out and it happens to me every once in, once in a while, how just the slightest movement and it like compresses your diaphragm a little bit. The pain in your back kind of goes into your diaphragm. So it makes your voice go. Ooh. That's that's what that's why my um, that's why my voice sounds as if I'm lifting weights right now. Every time I talk, I'm, <laughs> I'm having that little sharp pain in the back. Oh, and I forgot to go in uh, for one of the other reasons why I like the the short on the pound. Let me go in here. I failed to mention this. Tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning, we have the BOE, inflation, BOE inflation report. We have their bank rate. We have everything coming out as far as their interest rate decision, but also the inflation report. Inflation report, when it comes out, is kind of Carney's letter uh, to the minister and of, of the state of the economy. Every time this comes out, it seems like Carney's been pretty bearish. In fact, Carney's been pretty uh, dovish, if you will. That's more of central bank terms right in there. Almost every time he comes out and talks, he's delivering the inflation report. Then he talks at 7:45 a.m. Um, I, I, every intent, every everything that I see coming out of the Bank of England as of late has been extremely dovish. So I don't think that's going to change at all uh, as we go into tomorrow. So one of the other reasons why I'm looking at that short on the pound dollar is I'm looking at. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm really looking at uh, the pound since it's made such extreme highs here this morning. Uh, I would really be looking for this to make some kind of turn and come back down into uh, and settle down a bit, if you will, uh, to use a, a non-technical term. That's another reason why I kind of favored uh, pound shorts uh, going into that inflation report tomorrow. So that's another reason. That's just yet another reason to keep an eye out on that one. here and this is February 3rd not February 1st go ahead and save that Save that handout with you. 
Somebody asked how I threw my back out. Do you want me to be honest or do you want me to tell the truth? Because if I, uh, or do you, want me, do you want me to be honest or do you want me to, to, to be a man about it? Because if I was being a man, I would probably make up something like I was, you know, lifting weights or something like that. Because the, the way I threw my back out was actually kind of embarrassing. That's how you know you're getting old is uh, putting away dishes. You know, you kind of lean down to put dishes away in the dishwasher. And just, you know, as you get older, it's just like just weird everyday things will throw your back out. Yeah. I would like to say I got in a fight with like three guys like protecting my family or something, you know, but, you know, make it like action hero type. But no, I threw my back out putting away dishes. That's the embarrassing part of it. Leaning down to put dishes in the dishwasher and bam, it was like just sharp pain. It's like, oh, my God, how does that happen? <laughs> Let's see here. Steven, yeah, I'm, I'll get on that right afterwards. Um, I forgot to tell you, I'm, I got on a conference call with those guys on Monday, but uh, Greg, the guy who handles that, he wasn't in it. It was just uh, some of the, the higher-ups. So um, that's a good reminder. I'll call him right after class, I promise. We'll have that resolved today. So no worries there. All right, so you have your trade ideas for the day. I'm So I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording.